Please stand up and let's welcome Her Excellency Laura Chinchilla, President of Costa Rica, Her Excellency Patience Jonathan, First Lady of Nigeria, and Dr. Hamarun Touré, ITU Secretary General. Thank you very much. I would also want to welcome Deborah Tate to moderate the session. Thank you all so much and please be seated. I hope that you all are as excited and thrilled as I am to be here and look out at all of you all from all over the world. Truly, this is a global experience for all of us. And I am just thrilled to be here to moderate with this esteemed panel. Um, and we are so very thrilled that the president has been able to join us. So why do you all think that these esteemed leaders are here for three days, investing in you along with top CEOs from corporations all over the world, spending days here with you, nonprofits and foundations, philanthropists and investors who want to invest in your future. Many of them have paid for you all to come to this beautiful country of Costa Rica. So why? Anybody know why? It's a one word answer. You. You. Two ustedes key you. So we are so, so thrilled and I want all of us as adults to applaud you all for being here. You all have already heard from many speakers and they have said that we want you here to help us work toward the future that you dream of, that you dream of for yourselves, for your jobs, for your children and for your grandchildren. We want to be your voice and as the president says, we want to take your voice to the United Nations this fall. You, your creativity, your entrepreneurship, curiosity, and your fearlessness. You will help us solve the very real political, social, economic, healthcare issues of this transformative time in your own community, in your own nation, and for the entire world. So yesterday, I went all around and saw you all. You were negotiating, you were collaborating, you were learning together. You learned new technology skills, you learned new communication skills. You created music and apps and platforms. You've become empowered advocates and you've learned how to build an enterprise and not be afraid to fail. So today, we all want to talk to you about how we need your voice to reach out to others. We need your ideas to reach out, to be the train the trainer, to create an ad campaign or a video that helps us reach younger youth and children um, and to protect them in a safe and secure, trusted environment because that's the world in which you all live and certainly our younger children do. We are fortunate again to have three of the very strongest global voices sitting right here in front of you all. They are using their official titles, their official platforms, and as you will see, their personal commitments all for you 
for the children of the world, for children everywhere. So again, you are why we're gathered here, but you are also a crucial component to making sure that COP, Child Online Protection, is successful to educate and empower other youth, and especially our youngest citizens, with all the opportunities that are out there available to them, and yet the challenges in this virtual yet very real world. Secretary General, you have been an unbelievable leader, establishing the first special envoy for child online protection, and we thank you for that. He is not only a VIP with titles and degrees that you can read about in his bio, but like some of you all out there, was a small boy in a village in Africa, Timbuktu. Am I right? I still want to go. And like many of you all, um, he didn't have any connectivity, obviously, at that point in time to the outside world. Yet his brain, just like yours, was absolutely brimming with creativity and ideas and goals. What an inspiration he is to all of you, to all of us. He has lived around the world. He holds the highest title, Secretary General, at the oldest UN organization, the ITU. He speaks six languages, maybe by now seven, um, has multiple degrees and is a visionary leader for ICT. But today, he is here because of you and because of his commitment to this education and empowerment and for millions of kids around the world. So, Mr. Secretary General, when you look out here and you see this world of faces, what is your advice to help them not only be you, but be the next world leader? Thank you very much, uh, Debbie. And uh, I feel privileged to be sitting on this podium next to Her Excellency President Chinchilla of Costa Rica, the, our global patron for child online protection. Uh, President Chinchilla has uh, shown this leadership, and this is why she wanted to, us to organize this event here, and uh, I'm simply uh, humbled by the privileges that we have received here. I would like you to know, Madam President, that uh, your team has done a fantastic job. Let's give them a round of applause. And uh, I feel equally privileged to be sharing the stage with uh, Her Excellency Dr. Madam Jonathan. She is uh, the first lady of Nigeria. It's the largest uh, uh, country in Africa in terms of population. And her leadership in uh, ensuring the safety of children in her country has been second to none. This is why ITU has chosen to ask her to, uh, to lead the efforts in the continent with uh, the first ladies who know that pillow diplomacy works very well. When we have the first lady, we know the first man will, will be following us soon. <laughs> and I feel uh, privileged that uh, we have uh, our friends and colleagues from private sector. Uh, this session is uh, co-organized with along with uh, Disney company. Disney is here. Ellen, is Ellen here in the room? Please stand up. Stand up. Yeah, she's over there. And, uh, and UNICEF, our colleagues from UNICEF also are the one also who are organizing this event with us. And we feel very much uh, honored. Uh, and this comes along with uh, the numerous private companies from Oredu, Intel uh, to Cisco, Microsoft, that have been very, very actively supporting us. The cause we are defending here is one common denominator, the future of children. And when I'm talking to uh, my children and my grandchildren, I have two of them, and uh, I tell them to be sure that they behave in the online world, just like they are behaving 
in the offline world because the issue of, of uh, cyber security is equally important in the cyberspace than in the real world. We tend to tell our children when they are leaving out, going out in the street, we tend to tell them not to follow a stranger, not to accept even a candy from someone they don't know. It could be a drug. But we tend not to advise them when they are surfing in the safety of their bedrooms or of their classrooms. And sometimes even a picture that you can naively put on the web stays forever and you might regret what you've done many years to come, and it will never go away. And therefore, it's important that we work together. But this conference, as Debbie said, is about you. Debbie was the first special envoy for the child online protection that I put in place because uh, she, as a former FCC commissioner, she has done wonderful work in her own uh, her own state. Uh, the, uh, what's the name of your state again? Nashville, in Tennessee. Nash in Tennessee. In Tennessee. In Tennessee, she was a very strong force in terms of ensuring many programs are made for children there. And we are really having a wonderful journey. Today, we are blessed that you have accepted to come and you are giving us an opportunity to bring something to the United Nations and be part of your contribution for the future of this planet that will be in your hands after all. And therefore, we feel privileged that uh, we are embarking on this journey with you. And I cannot tell you how happy I am in sharing the excitement that you are bringing together here. Thank you. SG. Um, next, I want to ask Her Excellency Dame Dr. Patience Jonathan, the First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the ITU's Child Online Protection Champion and President of the African First Lady's Peace Mission. We are so thrilled, as the Secretary General said, to have you. So both with all of your titles and as a mother, how will you tell your children and the children of Nigeria uh, to be safe online? Do you have some words for our youth? Um, Hi, Excellency, the Presidents of Costa Rica and His Excellency, the Secretary General of IT. Um, well, as a mother, um, we know that this period in time is the era of internet time for the younger ones, for the youth. So as a mother, you are the first teacher to the child because charity begins at home. And as a mother, what do you do? You guide this child so that whenever the child goes into the internet, the child will know what and what to look out for. And at the same time as a mother, you open communication channel between you, the mother, and the child so that the child will be free to communicate with you. And you build confidence on the child as a mother so that the child will have self-esteem and the child will trust you and believe in you as a mother. And at the same time, as a mother, you should know that you will tell this child that in the internet, there is benefits and risks also in the internet. That means advantages and disadvantages when it comes to online. So you let the child know that both the benefits is people that post it into the internet and also the disadvantages. The risk is also people post it into the internet. So you, the child, whatever you put in, 
into the internet is what you get out of the internet. That means garbage in and garbage out of the internet. So, so this child, your own, daughter, your own child, you have to make sure that you tell the child that look, when you enter into the internet, not all information you should release out to in, in, inside the internet. Just like I will use example, what happened in my country as example to you people right now. There is a girl called Cynthia, and this girl is a student in the university. But because she is not aware that there is also um, risk connected into the internet. So she has a friend in um, Facebook, and now she trusts his friend so much. And this girl, her father is a general, a retired general. So what did she do now? She now tell, put all her information across to that friend. And now she tell the friend that I'm going to a city called Lagos. Come, so, 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 please, and wait for me. And that friend actually went there and wait for her. And she and that friend met. But you know, because she did not, she's just ignorant about it. And because the parents did not tell her that there is also frost risk connected to the internet. And when she reached there, this friend took her to the hotel and collected all her money and even killed her there. So, as a mother, you must make, communicate with the child. Open communication channel between you, the mother, and the child so that the child won't be afraid to tell you when she open the internet and come across Sabbath traits, she will be able to tell you the mother. Thank you. Thank you, Her Excellency. And now for our honored guest, Madam President, Laura Chinchia Miranda. Um, we, we give you our utmost appreciation for serving as our patron for the Child Online Protection and all you have done. And in fact, you all may not really realize this, but it was the President's dream. So can you imagine that the President of a country has spent these past three days off and on being with us, but it took an entire year of preparation for you all to be here today. A president who has changed her country and the world. She's encouraged this incredible ecotourism. She um, has supported anti-crime legislation to make Costa Rica a safer place, and she's created the stable and yet progressive regulatory environment for major investments like for companies like Intel to locate here and provide jobs for the youth of Costa Rica. She has concentrated on empowering and empowering her citizens to be healthier, like today in the stadium, uh, and the Be Healthy track that we had today, and enhanced educational tools. So why would an important president like this be here? One word, because of you. So. I want to ask you, Madam President, as the world leader, what would you tell this generation about building awareness in their own countries when they return home, and especially about good digital citizenship for all children? Thank you. Thank you very much, Deborah. Truly, for me, it's an honor to be here on this panel that is being led by such a great woman that has been done so much to the cause for the cause that we're currently debating and of course to share with the secretary generally who has given us this marvelous opportunity to all the Costa Rican citizens of being the uh, host country of a debate of such important and so transcendental and we also thank the first lady for have traveled from so far away to share with us the citizens of Latin America, 
many of our the concerns that are being debated in our continent, uh, which is part of it. This is a global discussion. Really. This is a global discussion. No regional borders. And the development of humanity. And and the telecommunications phenomena. This is why, as part of what we're celebrating here today, is to call the youth from all parts of the globe. And I am fully convinced you all share our same concerns, and probably you will approach the same conclusions to these problems. And the, prob the point here is to face these challenges, to share with others who are not part of this experience but who are, will also be needing a lot of the answers that you will be coming up with and you will be developing in these days that you've been sharing here together. In a way, when I was paying attention to the Secretary General and to the First Lady during their preliminary remarks, they, in a way, were stating something that is quite fundamental. Whenever we're talking about how we can conciliate freedom and responsibility, or freedom and safety, and in a way, the use of the internet involves for humanity is, well, greater progress, greater wellness, and of course, above all else, freedom. However, like any other phenomena that human evolution has faced, with more opportunities that a tool gives us to express ourselves, and also we have to have greater responsibility in each and every one of us. So there's a basic rule when we're facing the discussion about safety and responsibility and the internet and on the use of technological um, innovation. Well, the basic premise that every single human being has to behave responsibly. If I have greater freedom, or if I have access to a greater level of freedom, it's also because I have the obligation to be a much more responsible person. And so, above all else, there are three, let's call them, reflections that I would like to mention here today. And these points are things that force us to question ourselves on this panel on how to grant greater security through the use of technology and information for those of, uh, in our society who are more vulnerable, the children. How to ensure that we can protect the children online. First of all, I believe that first of all we need to think responsibly. Second, we need to think collectively. And thirdly, we need to think intelligently. From the perspective of responsibility, as I mentioned in the basic remark that we started with on this panel, you can't request greater levels of freedom. You can't assume that we have tools that make us more free if we're not willing to be more responsible. And this is a basic rule of ethics that we need to impose on using the internet, and which I believe assumes, above all else, a cultural revolution. Because I do want to mention that I have also been a great defendant of freedom on the internet, and I am very bothered by certain regulations which, under the excuse of freedom, some governments want to impose. But if we don't want governments or agencies to impose restrictions on us, that may seem even absurd, on the freedom that we have online, the only way to do this is to be responsible as users ourselves. And there's a sort of code of ethics that forces us to be responsible. And this commitment, we take it every day with our behavior and on how we share our experiences. We also need to think collectively. The internet, in a way, by generating the possibility of being anonymous, can promote more individualistic activities, and if we want to call them so, even selfish. But we need to keep in mind that, to the contrary, this is a globalization of experiences. This is a globalization of opportunities, but it's also one of risks. We need to think collectively, not anything of what we do 
or none of what we say on the internet is something that concerns me alone. It concerns everybody, the whole community. And thirdly, we need to think smart. And this is why we have you here today, because I have no doubt whatsoever that you are committed and you're responsible. I have no doubt that you feel part of a global collective. But we also need you to be smart that this intelligence of yours, of the youth of today, can provide to the world truths, the education, and through the exceptional access that you've had to digital technologies is used smart in an intelligent fashion. We want to hear your measures, we want to hear your options, we want to hear about your programs, we want to hear about your different notions of how to improve everything that is related to security online to protect our children. Thank you very much. We want you all to be able to get to work, so I think we might have one, uh, enough time for one question from the audience and maybe the Secretary General might want to respond to it. Anyone want to ask a question before we go to breakout groups? Yes, there's a... Uh, buenas tardes, mi nombre... I'm going to speak in Spanish. Okay. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es María Laura, yo soy de Costa Rica. Eh, una de las cosas que, se, que hemos estado hablando aquí es sobre la tecnología. Pero a mí me gustaría saber este, cuál sería el, el, el rol que tienen. Okay. ¿Cómo podríamos hacer que la tecnología sea un poco más accesible para las niñas y las jóvenes? Porque algo que yo he notado en esta conferencia es que en ese escenario hemos tenido como a cuatro mujeres, pero, aparta, además, eh, pero hemos tenido mucho más hombres. ¿Cómo podríamos entonces hacer para romper esa brecha que por cuestiones de pobreza, por cuestiones de género, porque por cuestiones de acceso tecnológico en algunos países las mujeres tienen mejores tienen menores opciones a, 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 la, a la tecnología y, a, y al desarrollo en sí en estas en estas en estas áreas y cómo también podríamos nosotros como jóvenes eh, invitar a las niñas a que se interesen por las áreas tecnológicas y áreas de ingeniería Ese sería mi pregunta. gracias thank you Merci pour votre question, je vais vous répondre en français cette fois-ci. Euh, je crois qu'il est très important que nous abordions cette question continuellement, et sans répit, parce que la question de euh, l'égalité euh, des genres dans tous les domaines, y compris les domaines des technologies de l'information et de la communication, est très importante. Et nous avons, nous, au sein de l'Union internationale de télécommunications, aborder cette question très tôt pendant mon mandat en tant que secrétaire général de l'UIT. Et cela s'est culminé en 2010 lors de la conférence des plénipotentiaires qui, qui s'est tenue dans cette région ici, au Mexique, à Guadalajara plus, plus précisément, où nous avons fait un certain nombre de résolutions assez importantes concernant euh, les femmes et les filles dans les technologies de l'information et de la communication. Tout d'abord, en assurant leur accès, un accès égal pour tous, aux technologies de l'information et de la communication, mais aussi pour favoriser des carrières, des opportunités de carrière pour les jeunes filles et les femmes dans le domaine des technologies de l'information et de la communication. Au sein du système des Nations Unies, je partage certaines de les ex, des très bonnes expériences que nous faisons au sein de l'Union internationale de télécommunications qui permettraient d'ouvrir les portes aux jeunes filles et aux femmes dans les carrières, surtout professionnelles. Parce qu'on a constaté aussi qu'en fait, euh, au bas de l'échelle, il peut y avoir une majorité de jeunes filles et de femmes, mais plus on monte dans le haut de la pyramide, évidemment, euh, le nombre de femmes diminue beaucoup. Cela se reflète dans beaucoup d'autres domaines. Dans les Fortunes 500, nous avons que une vingtaine de femmes qui sont présidentes des grandes sociétés. Et cela 
diminue encore plus quand vous montez sur les fortunes 1000, les 1000 compagnies les plus importantes dans le monde entier sont vraiment pas de façon équilibrée dirigées par des femmes et des hommes. Nous avons... Yeah. Okay, there is no translation from French, so I will have to repeat what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> It was very eloquent, <laughs> Monsieur Secretary I will do that, General. Let, let me finish my statement <laughs> in French yes. first. Yes. Uh, because, uh, parce que je voudrais aussi dire que nous avons décidé, par exemple, au sein de l'Union, d'avoir une journée. Uh, c'est le quatrième jeudi. Uh, jeudi, c'est le quatrième jour de, 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 de la semaine. Donc, le quatrième, le quatrième jeudi du quatrième mois de chaque année. Donc, le, 4 avril, le, le quatrième jeudi du mois d'avril qui est une journée mondiale dédiée aux, aux jeunes femmes et aux jeunes filles dans le domaine des technologies de l'information et de la communication. Ce, cela est une journée mondiale que nous célébrons afin de pouvoir encourager euh, l'entrée des jeunes filles et des femmes dans ce domaine. Et nous encourageons aussi euh, le recrutement des femmes euh, et des filles dans les domaines scientifiques tels que les mathématiques et les sciences. So let me say that in English. I believe that uh, it's very important to address this issue at every, in every major conference because the issue of gender equality is of utmost important, uh, importance for all of us. In fact, 51% of the world population are women. 51. And therefore, we need to make sure that they are have the equal opportunity in the areas of information and communication technologies. We at ITU have addressed this issue uh, from the beginning when I was elected as Secretary General, uh, when I took office in 2007, and it culminated at, during our plenipotentiary conference that took place in this region, in uh, Guadalajara, Mexico, in 2010, where we adopted a number of resolutions, not only for ITU, but for all of the member states, the 193 member states, for programs that will be encouraging women and girls, not on, only in the ICT field, but also will, will give them the opportunity to use ICT uh, in their daily life. We also promoting women to have careers in the ICT field, and this not only will be at a lower scale, lower level of the scale, because in every company, when you look at it, you will find more women at the lower level of the scale. But when, as the pyramid, you go up in the pyramid, there are less women. In fact, it applies to the Fortune 500, where we, you only have 20 women CEOs among the five, Fortune 500. And the number goes even lower when you go to Fortune 1000. Of course, we have some women leaders here but we still have, we have a, a long way to go in order to make sure there is a, a, a proper balance. Yesterday, during the session, I was referring to one country, Rwanda. Are the you from Rwanda here? Stand up, stand up, stand up. <laughs> you know, I like to give your country as an example because this is one country where the president has decided to have total parity across all sectors of life, there are 50% women in the parliament, 50% women in the government, 50% women ambassadors of that country. As a matter of fact, all the ambassadors uh, in Geneva that I've seen from Rwanda have been women except one. Uh, uh, so we need to probably work a little bit on the other side. No, I'm not trying to here to defend <laughs> men's rights. I think we still have to make sure that we are defending uh, women's rights and uh, especially knowing the fact that uh, we all learn our first lessons from our mothers. And uh, this is very important. Yeah. Okay. But we need continuously to remind ourselves of the importance of education. Uh, basic education will be key in making sure that women 
do get the right, but having the right and exercising it are two different things. So when the time comes for them to exercise that right, they should be ready. And therefore, emphasis should be made, special emphasis should be made on education and capacity building. So we have a real life example in Madam President of a female president of a nation. And, and uh, a, a first lady with a doctorate degree. Yes. <laughs> So I think it would be appropriate, we've run out of time, we need to move on to the breakout sessions, but I think it would be only appropriate for us to allow the President to give us some closing remarks before we depart. Then our panel will depart and Melissa will come back and let you know where everyone is going. Madam President. Well, the question that Maria Laura made is one that without repeating what I share in terms of uh, the reflections of the uh, General Secretary of the ITU regarding the challenges we have of access for women and girls to technologies, the certain types of training, especially technical and scientific areas. I'd like to say that this question brings up an issue that's fundamental, which is access to opportunity, access to technologies, regardless of you being a woman. But of course, if you're a minority, and that minority can be economically defined, socially defined, racially defined, or just in terms of gender or sexual preference. What's important here is we should remember access access as an essential issue and it's of course a challenge for the agenda in information and communication technologies. In that sense, I do believe that it is still a task of governments essentially, a part of the public agenda to guarantee the democratization of access and use of communication and information technologies. Technologies, Saying that you are not prepared in a certain sector to make use of those technologies is not a valid argument. Things should go the other way around. That's how I see it. First, you have to guarantee access to the different uh, sectors of population for these technologies, especially internet and digital technologies. And then we can say, in parallel, that we will all start learning and teaching people how to use that. Because there's no doubt that access to technologies is also a great opportunity for humanity to truly face, in a very short term, the possible elimination of social gaps that for many years, for generations, have affected humanity as a whole. We know that access to information through the internet, through the communication technologies and digital technologies is a great opportunity to close the knowledge gaps, to uh, improve access to information, to have a better education, to share as well all our opinions, and that's essential. In that sense, I do want to be fair, I would like to say that I have much hope for what is happening in the world. Of course, we're in a period of a transition. All transition periods in humanity are charged with traumatic processes, uh, uncertainties, where we're all learning as we go. To use these digital tools is something we're just learning. But we can't think that because of that, internet is a threat. It is a hope. It's a hope for the development and the evolution of humanity. And it's a hope, especially to close the knowledge gaps and the social gaps that for many centuries have hit humanity. Thank you very much. 
as you can see, you have three of the most passionate, articulate world leaders wanting to take your voice and your ideas to the entire world. So as we depart, please join me again in thanking them, and Melissa will come up and tell you about the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.